Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. In this video, we're going to show how to make your own Sibiki rig so that you can go out and catch as much bait as you want without having to spend just a lot of money uh, for, for those store bought Sibiki rigs. Because really, those store bought ones aren't really that effective. You can only use them once. Uh, after you use them, they start, you know, they start getting the hooks in your shirts and everything. They're just a huge hassle. And they're like four or five dollars a pop. So just not worth it, in my opinion. All you really need is just a little thing of hooks and you can use these multiple times. This is size eight. Um, this is for, for pinfish and, and a little bit bigger fish. If you're going after uh, you know, thread fin and, and a little bit smaller fish, go with a little bit smaller hook size, maybe, maybe size 10 or, or possibly even 12, depending on, again, what you're looking for. But, but so in this video, we'll show you exactly how to make this. And at the end, I'll show you a tip on how to make this rig work way better than those store-bought ones. There's one trick at the end where you can put a certain secret sauce on the hooks to, to make sure that they catch a ton of fish. All right, so here are the ingredients. This is all you need. You need some line. I, I like mono line for this. I usually use 10 pound test. This is 14. I figured it would, it would show up a little bit better in this video. Um, we need some hooks. In this case, I'm using four. You can use one. You can use three. You can use 10. It's just a, it's a preference thing. I like, I like just four because uh, when you start getting more than that, it just becomes a risk uh, of hooking yourself or others on the boat. So line, hooks, and then a weight. Uh, that is really it. And obviously some scissors or something to cut line with. And this knife here, this is going to be the tip for the very end where, uh, where I'll show you at the very end why a knife is needed. Uh, again, a really cool tip to make these just really, really effective. So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and uh, first step would be to just get the line. And we have to thread these four hooks, or again, however many hooks you're going to use, thread them onto the line. So just literally just thread them on here. These these eyes are so small, they're kind of hard to even get. So we thread them on. There's two. And again, don't worry about tying anything yet. We've got to thread everything on first. It's easier to wait till the end for that. So here is the fourth one there. So there's the, there's the four. So that's set. So now, now for, uh, this is going to be the very end of the line. And we want, to make, we want to make this so that we can take the weight on and off easily and efficiently. Because if we're going to go from a deeper water to a shallower water, we want to be able to change our weights really fast and easy without having to retie. So what we're going to use is a surgeon knot. So what we do is just double the line over. And I like to double it over by about four inches or so. And then grab on to, with, with this hand here, grab on to the, the tip. This is the tag end plus the main. And we're just going to do a simple overhand knot. So we just made that made overhand knot and we're going to put that loop through it. And I'll show you. So we basically, all we did was we just formed that loop. And I'll show you here above this black thing so it looks better. So this is basically just the loop at the very far end over here. And then it's just a basic, a basic overhand knot. So what we're going to do is called a surgeon knot. We're going to do it one more time. So instead of once, we're going to do it twice. That's called a double surgeon knot. And that's it. So it's just two basic, just two basic wraps. Pull it tight. Pull everything tight. There you have a nice strong knot. That thing is real strong and, and more importantly, it formed this loop at the end of the line. That, that is our goal. You can, you can tie other knots as long as you have a loop. That's the most important thing because what we can now do with a loop is we can take it through the weight and then just loop the weight through that loop and now you've affixed your weight to the line so that it's, it will not go, it will not come off unless you, unless you actually force it to. So if you wanted to change weights, you could simply just take it back around and pull it right off. And the cool thing is if you don't have that exact type of weight, you can even use it with these simple, um, these simple egg weights as well, which most people seem to have uh, more than anything. With that, you have to really scrunch down the, the point and drive it through. Now, again, same premise. Now that it's through, you take the weight around, or take, sorry, take the line around the weight, and now, Again, now that, that weight is on the line, it's not coming off. And just, just as easily, you can take it off, switch it with a bigger one, and whatever you need to do. So, so that is the, uh, the first step, is just to get this loop at the end and affix the, uh, the weight to it. Next, we're going to need to really start measuring out how far, uh, how far, how much line we want. Now i got a bit of a tangle here. So what I like to do is I like to have everything about six inches apart. So from the bottom weight, I like to have about six inches up to, to have the first hook. So I just basically just measure out in a, in a general sense. And then I pull the hook along with some line. And I do, again, that, very, that same exact knot. It's called the surgeon knot. So I do a loop. I take the hook through that loop. 
and I'll show you once I do this first one so you can see what's going on. So there, it's the same, same exact premise where we have the hook at the, t at the end with a basic overhand knot. And we can do it, we could do it once, it'll work, but it's much stronger. It was just with the second one. So well, again, that's just a double, double overhand knot, also known as a surgeon knot, and just pull that tight. All right, done. So now we have that, we can now pull it tight here with, uh, with the two main lines. And there, so now your first hook is, uh, is fixed on the line, it's not going anywhere, and we can now move on to the next one, uh, which will then do six inches ahead of the, the first. So measure out about six inches of, of line, do the exact same thing, where we just pull the lines tight, wrap it around, and you can do it much quicker by just doing a quick little double loop all in one swoop. So again, you can tie this really fast and easy. You can see that's the same, same result where we have just the double overhand knot, and then pull it tight. And now pull the tags. So there's number two. Now for the third one. Again, the same exact, you basically just have to just keep on repeating. So as I said before, you can use a lot of hooks here. It, you can, uh, it, as you can see, it just doesn't take that much longer. So get the line, go around, and then take the hook through that loop twice real quick. There we are. And then again, you know you have it right when you see that double overhand like that. Pull it tight. And now pull it tight from the lines. And final, it's our fourth and final hook is we will again pull it tight. I'm getting sloppy on my measurements, but that's gonna be close enough. Um, go around, take it through the loop, and then through it again, pull it, done, got it. There's, again, there's the double overhand, cinch it down, and now you have yourself an entire, an entire rig. This is exactly what we had before, entire rig of knots, and then, so at the very top part, you can just do a you can either tie a swivel. Uh, you know, when you buy these things, it comes with a swivel at the top. Uh, I just like to do a line-to-line -line knot. I just do a quick line-to-line -line knot with whatever, whatever, uh, whatever rod I'm using. I'll just tie it on at the end. Again, super, super simple, very effective. This is almost as effective as the store-bought kinds because the store-bought kinds they have kind of those uh, those little flashy little hairs on it, which um, may or may not do do better than others. I've I've caught a ton of fish just using the gold hooks. But what I found works best is, uh, this is the secret tip, is to put little pieces of gulp chunks, of gulp baits. I don't know what they put in these things, but I, I always just keep a, just a spare uh, bin of used gulps. And I found that the white ones work best. So here's a bunch of, bunch of used gulps. Um, I'll use this one right here. You can see I've, uh, the tail of this one was bitten off. This was one of their uh, swimming mullet. And uh, so we're just gonna cinch that down. We're gonna cut off some little chunks. That's where the knife comes in, in handy. Is cut off real small chunks. And then we're gonna put these on, the, on these hooks. And you have, what that does, that has, again, something just a little bit bigger where the fish can see. Uh, also, the scent is uh, really, really good in uh, getting extra strikes. So we're gonna cut this one in two. There we are. All right, so here are our four, four gulp chunks. Uh, next step is to, uh, let's go ahead and load up the hooks just so you can see what it looks like is again we're just gonna grab this stuff it is super slippery it's kind of tough to get on there but the cool thing is once you get it on there it's actually it's pretty hardy so that you can just put this this bait on here and you can catch multiple fish without having to, to rebait so let's go ahead and and get these others on here and then we'll show you the final result All right, so there is the final one. So now, we have our sabiki rig. We have multiple hooks, we have our weight, and e on each of the hooks is a, uh, a scent attractant. You can actually use squid. Some people cut up squid on, on these and do the same thing. It, again, it works great. Squid though, if you do little small chunks of squid, almost always they're gonna take the squid off. Uh, so every time you catch a fish, you're gonna have to replace the, the squid. Uh, with these little gulp chunks, they actually stay on there for a while. So um, I've caught you know, 10 to 20 uh, fish per hook per gulp. So you can catch a ton of fish with this. Really cool, uh, really cool rig. If you want to catch bait, and especially if you want to specify the, the size bait you're going to catch, this is awesome. It's, you know, with a cast net, you're throwing a net out there and you're going to catch everything. You're going to, you're going to dirty up your boat. You're going to catch little tiny stuff that, uh, that gets stuck in the net and, and ends up killing the fish. But when you use this with the size hook you're using, 
you can almost specify the exact size fish you're going to catch. So with this rig, I'll be targeting you know, three inches or, or bigger, you know, pinfish, croakers, grunts. Uh, they, they just love this. And for, for smaller fish, just get smaller hooks and little smaller pieces of gold. All right, well, that's it for the, uh, the Sabiki rig video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. But uh, more importantly, be sure to subscribe to this channel. We, we do fishing tips at least once a week, so we're going to have a lot more tips coming out. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also be sure to check out our website, which is saltstrong.com. That's where we keep all of our best content all there in one source. So thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in where the lines are today